everybody. You know what that sound means. It means it's time for a brand new edition of the Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. All right, we are getting after it. Look at that. My partner is over there in the vroom room. The vroom room. San Francisco. We have not officially named it that yet. We are still looking for suggestions from you guys in the nerd herd to help us out with naming Michael Deeb studio in San Francisco. I'm here in the Rami studio. We already have a name for this studio here in the container park, but I don't know, man. We've got some, some good suggestions there. Keep them coming by the, we're not going to name it until we have a thousand subscribers. So right. once we have all the, the suggestions and the comments, we'll kind of tally them up and we'll make a decision from there. I don't know. Maybe we'll narrow it down to a couple and put that out to you guys for a vote or something. Who knows? We'll figure something out, but it is time for suggestions. Um, boy, the nerd herd rocks. Don't they? Dude, they came out in full force. Uh, we said hi to so many people at Loop to Colt. It was fantastic. And I bet we picked up maybe five new subscribers. <laughs> Actually, more than that. Look, look at what was uh, on my desk when I got home. Um, these guys. Day late and a dollar short. Yeah, Zugmonster.com. They did a great job on the stickers, but uh, <laughs> they are not so good at the shipping deadlines, apparently. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got a bunch of bid nerd stickers and some swag. We even got uh, we've got dirt or die Porsche podcast uh, stickers as nice. well as we've always had the Rami show stickers. We got stickers for days, um, <laughs> but uh, now we just need to get them out in the fans' hands. So uh, man, that's a lot of rhyming that I did not intend on. Um, <laughs> all right, if you guys are new to the channel, you're going, hey, I've heard of this thing. What the hell is it that you actually do here? Uh, we're good with people. What the hell's wrong with you people um <laughs> i don't know a little uh, little reference to office space no what we do is we find the most interesting car of the day from all the auction sites we make a prediction you play along you can predict uh with us and then we will reconcile the results with our erroneous predictions uh and it's a fun <laughs> little game that you can play along with us it's like the price is right only it's cool cars instead of washer and dryers yeah. or you know, something else from Price. Instead what of else a, a meeting do? with the two bobs, it's a meeting with the two nerds. Yeah. So uh, dish, dish yourself up some rice aroni and settle in for a great old edition of the Bid Nerds. All right. Oh, you know what? Before we do that, we should shout out to our good friends over at what? God and Classic? Michael D., why don't you tell people real quick about God and Classic? <clears throat> God and Classic. Porsche of Las Vegas. God and Porsche of Las Vegas was the very first Porsche Classic partner in North America starting in 2016. Out of 190 Porsche stores, only 12 to this day are Porsche Classic partners because the vetting process is so difficult to meet all the criteria. You have to have the people, the passion, the expertise, and the space to meet all of Porsche Germany's qualifications to be a Classic partner. God and Porsche in Las Vegas was the very first they have those people. They have the passion. They've got the parts, everything you need. If you need something to do with your classic Porsche, call our friends at God and Porsche and tell them the Bid Nerds sent you. Well, there it is. That's good advice for Michael Deeb. That's probably the best advice you're going to get from him all day long because his production's... His production's oh, not so last good. week, last week, I stunk it up, man. You won every single one last week. Redemption is upon us. Let's see. Uh, let's see if uh, you can get any better at this. All right. Uh, what is today's most interesting car? This is kind of interesting. This is interesting. Like, so, yeah. John, um, you know what's funny is uh, you introduced me to some of the cool Porsche guys in the air cooled scene over in the East Bay, and this car is kind of like from their ancestors. What we're looking at on Bring a Trailer is a 1976 Porsche 911 S Targa, and you're saying to yourself, uh, uh. That's an M491. Well, this car was built by, let me read it to you because I made some notes, Red McClintosh, who used to have a Porsche uh, repair shop in the Emeryville, Oakland area. And he gifted this car to his good friend, Barry Garfinkel. Barry Garfinkel is a legend from the 60s, 70s, and 80s in the Bay Area because he used to race offshore power boats um, and had a apparently a beautiful shop with all these crazy boats in it and red mcclintosh was considered one of the air-cooled gurus um from 40 50 years ago he uh 
I think, built this car and gave it to his friend. They grafted on uh, steel flares to make it a wide body. Uh, you can see, JP, that it's got my my favorite and, and unaffordable Turbo Carrera wing. And then they rebuilt the motor, and I think they punched out the original 2.7 to be around 3 liters, uh, namely using 93-millimeter Male pistons and punching this motor out. Now, I'm not quite sure how this car is a built motor and still pass smog in California, but you can see that this period correct car is adorned with uh, a period correct California blue license plate. Um, I understand the car was left in storage in San Francisco for a number of years and the gentleman who found it and bought it and is selling it, the seller, turns out he was friends with Barry Garfinkel's son and knew Barry from back in the day and was actually familiar with the car. So he tells a very candid uh, story about the car in the video that is on the um, on the on the lot on the auction platform uh, in which he says that he'd been talking to this uh, gentleman for years and hearing about this uh, Porsche and this Ferrari that were in a garage in San Francisco. And when he finally went out and looked at the car, he actually knew what the car was, made the deal to purchase it. Um, he's been driving it over the last year or two, and he says the more he drives it and the more he puts into it, the better the car is running. Probably still needs some work, but it's just a really cool car. Um, originally, I think it was uh, – what was Duty Brown? It was Bitter Chocolate, right? So it was Bitter Chocolate originally, and it was repainted this metallic brown color. Uh, it's got a beige interior, but the seats are a dark brown leather. It's got an aftermarket shift knob. It's got a Nardi steering wheel. And then again, the motor has been built, but um, it's just a really cool car with an amazing Bay Area Providence. Um, I'd love it if this car wound up staying in Northern California and would come to like the Easy Show or maybe the uh, soon to be future Cars Und Cafe San Francisco, which will also start happening on the last Sunday of every month. Um, so check the space as we'll let you know when the first one's going to hit. But um, I just looked at this car. I watched the video and JP, I drank the Kool-Aid. Uh, this is a really cool car. If this car were available before I had bought mine, I would definitely be bidding on it. I just I like everything about it. Um, um, I even like the colorway and how kind of tacky it is. It's um, it's really it, – it's growing on me. Every time I look at it, I'm like, man, that's a cool car. I wish I had it. So, JP, there you go. I send it back to you. I know you of all people will appreciate a car – um, the story is part of it, but just everything that went into the car, you know, the flares and the motor and the different interiors and that it's just a driver. It's got to be like the least pretentious special car out there. And I feel like most of the cars that you own that you drive uh, would fit the mold uh, that went into this car. So I send it back to you. Um, what do you think of this car? What do you think of the story? Yeah, I'm shocked to hear from you that you would drive this. Um, yeah, I do I love it. Yeah, I do love it. So of course, cool. it's because it's a little beat up, you know, it's a little, yeah. little not perfect. And, and you tend to be more, uh, yeah. you know, your cars need to be a little bit prettier, a little bit nicer, a little bit more I, sp special. And I, you know, I get the heritage aspect of it being that it's, you know, it's got this hometown San Francisco thing going on. Um, yep. but, uh, you know, your actual four nine one is such a beautiful car. This car, yep. not being a real wide body, uh, that really, really shocks me that uh, that you yeah. would drive this. Um, <clears throat> this thing's great. I mean, it, it, as long as it's not, as long as, as long as whoever is selling it isn't expecting some big money. Um, yeah. And that's the big question, right? Because this car, look, there's a few things that need to be done right now. Um, ride height for one. Um, you know, I'm not saying slam it or anything like that. Uh, uh, you but you know, crank it down on the torsion bars, crank yeah. it down on the torsion bars a little bit. Um, I don't know how wide those rear tires are. It looked, they look to be nine inch. Um, but you know, they need some spacers on there to fill up the arches. They're really kind of tucked in there. And that just is glaringly ugly on a wide body when the wheel doesn't fit. Um, you know, I don't know if I can zoom in on that so you guys can see what I'm talking about, but you know, that's, that wheel back there just not fitting in that arch just looks so Stance bad. War. Yeah. Stance wars reject. <laughs> right, you know. And the, the sad thing is that if it were if it were done correctly, it would just it would make the car look so much better and this person is trying right. to sell. It. Look, you don't even need to do you don't need to buy, well, I guess you'd need the spacers, but you're talking about yeah. a 
two hundred dollars set of spacers for the yeah. rear. Yeah. Um, you know, and no money to you know maybe you got to go to a shop to to lower the rear torsion bars. The front torsion bars are really easy to lower. Uh, the rears are a little bit of a pain in the ass, but yeah. yeah. Um, but you're not talking about a huge expense here to set the ride height of this car up correctly. And it'd probably literally ride better because it wouldn't have that. It wouldn't be quite as squishy if you brought it down a little bit more. Um, uh, it, it's such a bummer that it's not the original color because that, that, that f- not flat, but that uh, non-metallic brown would look so dope on this car on a yeah. wide body. Holy I cow. Can you imagine? Yeah. Oh, God. You almost want to, like, maybe vinyl wrap it or something like that to make it uh, th- that original color. I wouldn't go through the, the expense of trying to repaint it because um, this car isn't original. Yeah. The repainting it is just a, it's just a fool's errand now that you'd spend thousands and th- but, tens of thousands of dollars to, to try and, to do and, that. And the flares, the flares, and the paint job are part of this car's story. That's yeah. that's the that's a, that's a key part of the car's provenance, which is uh, pretty dope. Yeah, and it looks like the engine, you know, underneath the engine is really clean and everything like that. Yeah, I just I think this is a great opportunity to have a looker of a car uh, yep. for not a lot of money. Um, yep. And that's what gets me excited about it. And I love that the top comes off. I love Targa's. You know, we talked about uh, how Ryan Gosling sold that guy's um, real <laughs> 491 Targa yeah, last did. week because we have oh, the uh, yeah, here. Let's see if I can pull it up again real quick. Uh, yeah, you got Ryan Gosling um, in this in this commercial for Tag Heuer selling a wide body. It wasn't a Targa, um, but the Targa that that was on was it BAT last week? You know, yeah. it identical. It was the same car, except that it was a Targa, had the same yeah. wheels and all that stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, oh. what's that? Yeah, there he <laughs> crushes the roof. Oh, so sad. So yeah. sad. Check that video out. That is a lot of fun that uh, Tag Heuer made starring Ryan Gosling. I don't. I don't think that's going to bump the value of this car at all. Of course, um, but. Um, yeah, okay, so I guess there it is. A modified car with a little bit of provenance just for your town. I mean, this provenance yeah. doesn't... Yeah. This only yeah, matters to someone in the Bay. No one in L.A. Yeah. or anywhere else is going to care about that, are they? No, not at all, not at all. I mean, look, uh, stories sell cars, and this car has a great story, uh, but it won't... It, it, it's not a It's not a story that uh, somebody would pay a premium for, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, but, it's, but it's very interesting. This car has had a really rich history. Um and it looks like it's set to have, you know, a new lease on life. So JP, our car closes in just a couple of days and it's sitting at just $32,000. Um, initially I put 86,000 bucks, but I, I, I think I was a little high on that one. So I'm going to, I'm going to temper that just a bit and go $76,000 to you for this non-original 76 built motor, probably three liter, um, and still needs a little bit of love. You know, uh, you listen to the guy, he's like, yeah, the more I drive it, the more it's driving better. That, that means that this car still needs some attention and attention means money. So you're not going to get it up front. You're going to have to spend it later. So I think 76 is a pretty fair number. It could go less. It could go more. I think it looks pretty good. So I'll send it to you. $76,000 JP it closes in just two days. What do you think? Yeah, I don't think there's any chance in hell it gets anywhere near that um i'm Come gonna say on, 52 uh it's wow. another twenty thousand bucks I, look i i think that's too much i mean i wouldn't pay more than 45 for this car um that's what this car's worth it's 45 grand um All right. so it but i'll give it 52 just because it's got some eyeball uh and it's getting a little attention on bat and bat you know has a wider audience but it's not a real wide body um and i don't care but i also wouldn't pay extra um, right. for this car. Uh, you know, it's not a real one. It's not a real one. It's not a real one. That's all there is to it. Um, this is an, this could be an excellent driver car. This could, could be an excellent opportunity to get into something that's terribly fun, but paying more than $50,000 for this would be stupid because at that point you could get, you're way better off buying a clean SC coupe or a clean SC, uh, Targa that does not have the fake wide body kit because honestly that, you know, that would be worth more. Um, unless you just have to have that look, but just, I just, you see these all the time. I mean that, that, uh, I wish I had that slant nose Targa wide body that I, my Marlboro yeah, car, that was one of the should have kept that cars. car, yeah. put some money into it. Yeah. I, I would have had to have put a lot it. of money into it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just, uh, 52, I, 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 I'd like to see it get more, I guess, you know, cause it sounds like it's got a cool story, but I just don't see anybody really, it's not I, spectacular I would color. Like to, it's got rough I would, spots. I would like to name the episode for. Uh, I would like to name the episode for our YouTube channel, and that is uh, 
JP hates Targus. Yes. <laughs> Everyone knows that's the case, right? I mean, come on. I yeah, I definitely want 52. Ugh. 52. Yeah. Um, I think you're just lowballing the audience so that you can pick it up for cheap. That's what That's what's happen. happening. But that's not I you know 50 yeah, boy. What do you guys think? I mean, <laughs> would you pay more than $50,000 for a fakey fake uh wide body uh Targa not even an SC? I mean, okay. Yes. I yes. guess, um, but you know, go on PCA or go on Renlist or whatever. The cars like this pop up all the time for in the forties and fifties. Um, this right. is just not a car that's going to ever appreciate. Um, and it just needs too much now. Okay. Look, yeah. Had someone done the things that I'm suggesting, had they lowered it and, and got the ride height, correct. Um, taken some better pictures and, um, maybe a good driving video that shows just how good a driver it is. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's, it gets up there closer to 60, but the, I, without that, there's no way. The, but the hard part with that argument is that somebody can do all that for nothing. I mean, this is a couple hundred bucks from looking like a totally different car. And I just feel like the guy who's out there could see that. So I, you know, I don't know that but you're that's gonna, the thing. I, I, I think people yeah. are just, you know, you're glancing through you're right. all these different cars. Um, yeah. I think the person that sees that isn't the person that, uh, that, I, I think that person knows that, okay, it's only worth X, but I could buy it and maybe make a little profit. And buy, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let us know in, this, in, the, uh, in the comments below. I'm curious to see what Ross thinks. I'm curious to think, uh, to see what all of our bid nerds friends think because, you know, look, the nerd herd rocks, right, Michael Deeb? Oh, my God, dude, they're awesome. They're mm. awesome, and they're everywhere. They're Gregory and Sahan and Anthony and – Jay Buddha. and Mikey and Buddha and Michael and man, I'm just going through Adam. I mean, Family there's just guy. so many, but Jeffrey, Ray, Kevin, Will, man, you guys, you know, I love that you guys are talking to one another too. That rocks. <laughs> I love the conversations that like, it started out where it was just conversations with us and, 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 uh, you know, the nerd herd, but now the nerd herd is like, they're getting into it. Yeah. Love yeah. seeing that. That's tons of fun, man. Um, all right. I know we've had you guys on the fence, uh, just, We've been talking about getting this swag out to you, uh, but it's actually here. So we're going to figure out the best way to get you guys stickers and uh, we will have an announcement soon. Um, we will see you. Uh, right, oh, let us, uh, oh, let yeah, us know. Let us know what time would be good for a live show. Oh yeah. Yeah. As soon, but, when we get when to a thousand think, subscribers, we're going to start yeah. doing a weekly live show and we want to know yeah. when the best so, time of day. So what day and what hour, you know, is it a daytime, a morning, an evening thing? And then what day of the week uh, works for the majority of the herd? So let us know. Okay. So we're going to find out what uh, the results of this 1976 Porsche 911 S fake wide body uh, are. Now right is the time to put your, your bids in. And we'll find out right after. Go ahead, Deeb. Right after this. We suck at this. <laughs> hey, guys, I got to tell you about our friends, Godden Porsche of Las Vegas and Godden Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at Godden. Save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about. And just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. Godden Porsche of Las Vegas. We uh, talk about Looped Cold a lot. We had Patrick Long on the show a couple episodes ago. I like to find, you know, beef everywhere we can. It's just kind of like an old Wendy's commercial. Um, and uh, there's some there's some ish going on right now because <laughs> every time Looped Cult comes up, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the, the film festivals. What is it? Uh, yeah, Sundance, Sundance, Park like Sundance, Sundance and then you got Slam Dance and, and, and all yeah, the other ones. Yeah. You know, Looped Cult's kind of cultivated all yeah. these other events that happen around it. And then you get all these different bodies that are like, there, there's all this political posturing, everyone trying to like, oh, you come to our event or no, you come to our event. And, you know, so this year it's no different being in San Francisco. All right. Welcome to the future, everyone. We are back with the results of this 76 wide body 911. Uh, we got Tootie in the studio. She's making sure that the intruders out there or, yeah. you know, whatever, not uh, to Patootie is just killing the murder. Patootie is our producer and our head of security. So that is correct. Know, yeah. She, yeah. Watch. She's on the night's watch of the podcast. So <laughs> She's <you> <laughs> tough. She is tough. All right. Well, look, uh, what what happened with this 76, man? I don't know. 
GP, you know, we do this show because we love cars. We do this show because we're a couple of nerds, um, but mostly because we love cars. And uh, that's not my screen. Yeah. There we go. All right, cool. So, uh, John, I bid completely with my heart here. And as we come to the result of this auction, I'm almost blushing because I'm so embarrassed because I, I came in. I actually lowered my, my bid to $76,000. And after you got done laughing, you said $52,000 as your bid for the 76 911S Targa with a cool Bay Area story, but not something that would actually build value in the car. Uh, again, I'm all heart, no brains. John, our car sold for $49,000. Can you smell that? You were really close to a Yahtzee uh, on just 14 bids. Not a lot of action, not a lot of love for a 76S Targa that was built to be a wide body and has a Mitch match interior and a, it's got a built engine. It's a cool hot rod, but I really thought like, honestly, I really thought like, like if you were to try and replicate this car, you couldn't do it for twice what it sold for. So somebody really did kind of rip this car in a slightly down economy with high interest rates. And there's just not a lot of love for this kind of build at the moment. And I just, I feel like somebody did really good buying the car. Uh, I feel sorry for the guy that sold it because I personally think that car is worth more money than that. Um, I know you will disagree with me from a, you know, just a matter of fact standpoint, but I just, maybe I just wanted this car to be worth more money. I don't know. It just, it just seems like a lot of car for the money. Um, a real M491 Targa wide body in any year would would the conversation would start at 100 grand. Uh, we had that car uh, drop when Ryan Gosling did that wide body commercial for uh, what was it? Uh, tag, the tag Heuer watches, yeah. yeah. Tag Tag Heuer watches, and um, and then that car brought like 140 thousand dollars. So I mean, think about this: you, if you don't get one that's an authentic M491, you could save 100 grand. I, that just seems like a really low number to me. And that's why I bid. I feel like I need to explain myself because I was so far off. But I really wanted this car to be worth more money. JP, you nailed it. You almost got a Yahtzee. Um, this result makes me sad. And I should have bought this car, to be honest. But anyways, uh, I send it back to you. What do you think of that result? I know you're going to be like, yeah, 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 I told you. I mean, honestly, you're the one that kind of ground this into me when you used to be the classic manager at God and Porsche. <laughs> Um, yeah. you know, people would always bring in stuff like this that uh -huh. wasn't factory, uh, right. that looked great, that may have performed, that had all these great things about it. Um, but you're, I mean, you wouldn't just like n offer people low amounts of money for these cars. You would just tell them to pound sand politely <laughs> and in the <laughs> nicest way, but you're like, we don't want it. If we yeah. have the crest out front, we can't sell something like this. You couldn't right. buy this car like God and as good a car as this may be, God and Porsche yeah. would not buy this uh, no. and they would not floor this because it's just, no. it's just, you know, uh, it, it, inauthentic. it's inauthentic and that's fine for a driver. Yeah. I actually think this is a great value. I agree with you, but I yes. don't think it's worth anything. I mean, this is a car I would absolutely buy because I like the look. I don't give a flying rat's butt. Uh, if it's authentic or not, clearly. I mean, I have a backdate car. That's not authentic at all. Um, but I think this car, I mean, the fact that, I mean, yeah, okay, it had a three liter put in it. That definitely helps. Um, but, you know, I mean, it was a 76. 76s are narrow bodies to start with. And then those have actually, you know, shucks, those, uh, those mid-year cars are actually going up in value. People want the ones without any flares at all. So yeah. bringing this back to stock with the, you know, putting a two seven back in it is just never going to happen. This car is never going yeah. back to original. So this car is always going to be a hot rod. And also it's not hot rod enough. Like if it right. had RSR bumpers, you know, if it got rid of the accordions, got rid of those big, huge bumpers, uh, bumperettes on the back and stuff like that. And they just took it another degree further, uh, maybe got rid of the whale, t uh, the, you know, the whale tail or put a duck tail on or something like that. Just gave it a little bit more hot rod cred. Then maybe it starts to go up a little bit. But right now, uh, I think the value, I'm, I, honestly, the number that it brought is exactly what I think it's worth. 
Yeah. Well, John, if I wanted to spend my morning having somebody feed me a spoonful of my own medicine, I'd just go up and spend time with my wife. So, you know, back <laughs> off. <laughs> well, like I said, you taught me all this, not the other way around. So, yeah. You're I, uh... so right. You're so right. You're so right. And the funny thing is, I mean, we just saw one of these uh, Carrera Turbo uh, whale tails bring 15,000 bucks. Does that mean the value of this car is actually 35? You know? yeah, right. Like, I mean, if that's yeah. a real and, tail, maybe by itself. Yeah. Um, and but, if it yeah. were... If it were a 76 911 S Targa, and it and I don't know if I mentioned this originally, the car was repainted to be the metallic brown. I think the car was originally tan. If it were a 76 S Targa in tan, in nice condition with the original seats, would it have brought more money? Maybe, huh? It would Probably. have been like, yeah, it might yeah, have been I a $60,000 I mean, car. Looking, looking under the engine compartment, it looks like it was kind of duty brown brown. What color? What's this color? Um yeah yeah that that's definitely uh, not tan but it's that it, it looks like it bitter, was the same bitter chocolate bitter chocolate there you go yeah. yeah i mean that's always the giveaway is looking under the engine lid because they're never going to yeah maybe that that's stuff. what it was it's been it's it, i mean admittedly john it's been a week i kind of forget what i read yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, it was repainted uh the metallic shade so maybe it was bitter chocolate and not tan but anyway whatever either way i mean that you, that, that non-metallic color is definitely worth something now duty brown uh rami 74 duty brown car that you can see the film on uh, yeah under fascination uh you know that that thing is such was i I've always loved that car i was such i was so bummed when he got rid of it but uh yeah so that car resides in southern california and jp will be dismayed to learn mm -hmm. that it has been wrapped in guards red paint because that's what the guy wanted but he loved the story of rami owning the car and the mm -hmm. video on it and he bought rami's car and wrapped it he will unwrap it to sell it i'm sure but he is thoroughly enjoying that car with nice. like uh i can't remember he has like seven sons or something and he takes them out one at a time nice. uh and, and rides in his in his car but that how do you was, afford uh, a classic portion and have seven kids that's uh pretty yeah. darn impressive he must be uh, yeah he, he's a master of industry jp he drove when he came to pick up the car no when he came to pay for the car and inspect it and pay for it give me the money on it um this was back in 19 i want to say um he drove from southern california to las vegas in his tesla that had an autonomous driving mode was one of the mm -hmm. first models to offer it mm -hmm. and um he goes michael i'll just be on the computer all day and i was like oh you're taking the train he goes no i'm just going to drive in my tesla and drive for me and he drove on the desert just in the in the driver's seat on his laptop working the whole time letting the car drive him to to Could god you do to that pay for the car. no matter even even if car says it can do it could you I, take your I eyes off the road no, that okay. would oh my god i don't trust my wife with the remote control of the television you think i would let a car <laughs> drive me around at 100 miles an hour there's no way like, there's no way well, I mean, maybe he's one of the guys that's responsible for all these great AI tools that are out there that are making it a little easier for us to publish the show. If you are, uh, you know, if you if you're watching us here on YouTube where we where we do the show every day, um, that's kind of our primary place of publishing. But we are available now just about everywhere. I mean, uh, Spotify, Amazon, uh, just, there's all these places I don't even know. Uh, we're putting up the show in almost every darn platform there is. Um, so if you don't want to watch us, which I recommend not looking at us, I mean, that's got to be harsh. Um, maybe on one of these podcast platforms, it'd be better just to listen to us or something. Uh, but either way, um, you know, it, you do kind of want to see the car, but there are other video, you know, Spotify were a video, but all, you know, Apple pods, all the, all the other places you can find us on all the platforms. Now we are the bid nerd, nerd herd, nerd nation has expanded and, uh, we're getting darn near a thousand subscribers here on the YouTube channel. Uh, so we really appreciate you guys helping us out with that. I don't know how many more subscribers we have on all the other platforms because we don't really pay attention um, specifically to all of those. It's hard to, you know, kind of aggregate and see how many of those are crossing over from one to the other. But it certainly does seem like it's growing. As soon as we get to a thousand subscribers here on the YouTube channel, we'll start doing a weekly live show uh, and maybe you guys can interact with us and we're looking for your feedback to let us know what day of the week and what time of day would you be most likely to join us and hang out for a live weekly Bid Nerds podcast uh, you know, on YouTube here uh, where you could kind of super chat with us? So let us know in the comments below. Let us know what you think of the results of this 76 wide body outlaw car. And uh, you know what? We're going to just uh, end this. Then end it. We're done.
Get those nerds! 